Hey everyone, this is Nick from Casca Mountain Customs. I'm back today with another short video. But before I go any further, I want to thank everyone who checked out the last video and reached out to me with the positive feedback. I really appreciate everyone who follows and watches these videos and I hope I can help some people out with some tips. So today though, I want to quickly talk about form versus shape and look at the difference between the two, but more importantly, talk about the relationship between the two when it comes to metal shaping and making more complex parts. So let's take a look at form. I like to explain putting form into a panel is anything that you do that you can easily just put back. So bending, folding, twisting, rolling, anything. If, whether you're doing it by hand, you need a machine, anything that you can basically just put back to the way it was is form. Now shape on the other hand is a little bit different. Now, I've affected this metal at a molecular level. I stretched the molecules apart. That will not simply go back into place, and that is shape. So there's a really simple, quick example of form versus shape. With form, you're not really affecting the metal at a molecular level. So you could bend it, twist it, roll it, etc., and you could put it right back to where you started. The arrangement of those molecules are the same. You can make some really complex parts um, using form alone. Now, what's referred to as shaping, uh, we're affecting the metal at a molecular level. When you stretch the metal, you're pulling those molecules apart and making the metal thinner. And when you shrink the metal, you're pushing those molecules together and making the metal thicker. Now, what's really important that a lot of people get confused about is the relationship between form versus shape because you need both of them to make a complex part. So to demonstrate that, I'm gonna turn this into a quick little motorcycle fender and we'll take a look at that super important relationship between form and shape. Okay, I've spent a few minutes shaping this into a mellow little motorcycle fender. And if we look on this profile gauge here, you can see it has right about a three radius going up cross the fender. Now, if we take note of the radius going down the center, we'll use this gauge here and we'll mark that. All right, so now this panel is in the proper shape and form that I'm looking for, and that's all well and good. But where I see a lot of people run into problems is when they're trying to achieve a certain shape and they're checking it with their profile gauge, which is all well and good, However, the panel isn't in the correct form when they're checking it. So let's take this and modify its form a little bit. Just a bit. Okay. So now take a look at the difference here. That's obviously changed. Got all the space on the ends. So our radius is steeper. But more importantly, let's see what happened to our center radius. It's no longer a three. Now it's a four. Let's do some more. And right now, I'm just changing the form. Okay. We're way off here now. And our radius is now turned to a six. No fear though, it's just form. So if I put this back, See, is it close? Oh, I actually went back a little bit too far. Let's try that. There we go, pretty close. And our cross radius is now back to number three. Actually, get that. Let's get that right back. There it is. So that shows the relationship between form and shape when you're making a panel. I think the motorcycle fender is a great simple example of the relationship between form and shape. As you can see, I wasn't manipulating the shape at all, but by changing the form, it radically changed the appearance of the shape that was put in that panel. Now, that's real simple. It's real easy to see when your form is off. 
However, when you get into a more complex panel, such as this one, if I can fit it in here, you can see there's form and shape there, and there's form and shape here. I have that protruding lip hammered into this panel, the knee and that. All of those sections have different form and shape. And if you're out of whack on one of them, the whole panel is not going to fit. So as you're manipulating one, you have to make sure that everything else is in check and vice versa. So when this panel is complete and correct, it has a proper form and shape all the way through. As you can see, it gets a little tricky as you progress. So the moral of the story is when you're working towards a proper shape, you have to make sure it's in the proper form before you go checking it with your radius gauge. A lot of people are anxious to jump on the power hammer, English wheel, et cetera, and start banging away to get more shape in that panel. But really, you might just need a form adjustment. So think about that next time you're out in the shop working. And uh, I hope this helps someone. Thanks for checking it out.